Welcome back to the channel. This is our final episode in the series we call Get, Get Ready about preparedness for joint replacement surgery. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I've been historically pretty skeptical about, nutrition. Let me explain. This is the Surgeon Un. I'm going to share with you what I've learned in doing research for this episode and share with you that I may have changed my mind just a little bit. First of all, let me start out by saying that this is not a sponsored video. I received no payment from the company of the product that I'm going to test for you a little bit later. They did send me a free sample of it. This channel does stand to earn a commission if you order through the links that we provide in the description. Feel free to buy it on your own through a separate link or through your own provider's links. Whatever makes you more comfortable. Feel free to research the products. If you had asked me five years ago, or honestly even two years ago, whether I thought you needed any kind of special nutritional supplement for a knee or hip replacement, I would have looked you in the eye and said, absolutely not. Save your money. Just go eat a steak and some eggs. I've always been a skeptic, and I still am, because the supplement industry is one of the most fraudulent corners of health and wellness. It's full of hype, bad science, exaggerated claims, and people trying to separate you from your wallet. But recently I had to do something surgeons hate doing. I had to admit I might have been wrong. Not because of marketing, not because of influencers. I changed my mind because of randomized controlled trials. Level 1 evidence in real total knee replacement patients showing that a targeted essential amino acid strategy using a short perioperative window can reduce early muscle loss and improve muscle recovery. So in this video, I'm going to explain the biology in plain English, why food first is often difficult to execute right after surgery, and the three randomized trials that really changed my mind. Please keep in mind, this video is education only. It is not medical advice. I am not your doctor, and I am definitely not a nutritionist. Always discuss any supplement or nutrition plan with your surgeon or physician, especially if you have kidney disease, metabolic disorders like PKU, which is phenylketonuria, or complex medical issues. So let's talk about the biology. This is the part most people underestimate. A knee replacement or hip replacement is not just a big bruise. Surgery is controlled trauma, and your body responds to trauma in predictable ways. Inflammation goes up, stress hormones rise, metabolic demand increases. And for a period of time, your body shifts towards a catabolic state. Catabolic means your body breaks things down, and one of the things that breaks down is muscle. Even if your incision looks great, even if your x-ray looks perfect, the inside of your body is dealing with a major physiologic event. Your body needs raw materials to heal. Those raw materials are called amino acids. Now here's my old argument, and it still sounds reasonable. Food first. Why buy anything special when you can eat real food? In a perfect world, I still believe in food first. If you're a healthy 25-year-old athlete, you're sleeping well, you have a great appetite, and you can reliably eat high-quality protein multiple times a day, you can probably eat your way through recovery. But most joint replacement surgery patients are not 25, and there are two realities that make just eat steak and eggs hard for most people right after surgery. The first is called the catabolic storm. Right after surgery, your metabolic demand is high. Your body is rebuilding tissue, healing a wound, and managing inflammation. The need for protein building blocks goes way up. The other part is the appetite crash that occurs. At the exact moment your body needs more fuel than ever, you want food less than ever. You've had anesthesia, you may feel nauseated, you may even be constipated. You may be on pain medications, you may be sleeping poorly. You have some stress, and you're moving less. So, most people aren't sitting down on post-op day one and eating a big ribeye steak. And even if they try, they rarely do it consistently enough to hit high protein targets day after day in that early window. So that's the mismatch, high demand and then low intake. But there's a third factor that matters, and that's where the science gets interesting. It's called anabolic resistance. Here's the simplest way to understand it. When you're young, your muscles are very responsive. You eat protein, your body hears that signal, and muscle protein synthesis turns on. As we age, muscles become less responsive to the same stimulus. The same protein dose produces a weaker anabolic response. So in older adults, it's not just about more protein, it's about a better signal. That's where essential amino acids come into play. EAAs are the amino acids your body cannot manufacture. You must get them from food or supplementation. They are the true building blocks you can't do without. 
And one amino acid in particular gets a lot of attention for good reason, leucine. Leucine is often described as a key trigger for anabolic signaling. This is commonly discussed as the mTOR pathway. Some people call it the foreman that flips the body from breaking down towards building up. So if you combine these three realities, catabolic stress, appetite crash, and anabolic resistance, you can understand why a targeted essential amino acid approach might work better than just try to eat more in the first couple of weeks after your surgery. Now let's talk about the evidence that changed my mind. As I mentioned before, I'm pretty big into outcomes and evidence-based science. I'm gonna walk you through three randomized trials in total knee replacement patients. These are not surveys, they're not retrospective studies. These are placebo-controlled randomized trials. In the world of nutrition, which is notoriously difficult to study, it's really important that you have randomization. There's so many things about people's diet, culture, and food availability that can bias the results. Randomization removes that bias. Also, these studies were blinded, so the placebo effect is mostly removed. The first trial from Dreyer and colleagues was published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation in 2013. This was sort of our first signal. This was a double-blind, randomized trial in total knee arthroplasty patients. One group received essential amino acids, the other group received a placebo. Here's the result that got my attention. In the placebo group, patients lost about 14% of quadriceps muscle volume in just two weeks. In the essential amino acid group, the loss was only about 3%. That is not a subtle difference. You may say, well, 3%, 14%, no big deal. Well, that's almost five times as much muscle loss in the placebo group. That's a big shift in early muscle preservation in the exact window when people feel weak, unstable, and behind. The second study came in 2020 in the Bone and Joint Journal. This is by Uyama et al., and this study won the very prestigious Ranawad Award. This was also a double-blind, randomized trial using perioperative essential amino acids around total knee replacement. They looked at muscle measures like rectus femoris changes and early recovery. Again, the essential amino acid strategy showed better early muscle preservation and recovery signals compared to placebo. Now, a reasonable skeptic could say, okay, fine, maybe it helps early, but does that advantage last? That brings us to the third trial, Uoyama again, published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery in 2023. This was a double-blinded, randomized controlled trial that followed patients out two years after total knee replacement. Here's what they did. They randomized patients to essential amino acids, 9 grams per day, or placebo. They started one week before surgery and continued through two weeks after surgery. So this wasn't a lifelong supplement. It was a short perioperative window. The result? At two years, the essential amino acid group had greater recovery of quadriceps muscle and strength and muscle volume measures compared to placebo. Now, I want to be careful and honest here. Clinical outcome scores were not significantly different in every category. So I'm not going to promise you that essential amino acids guarantee a better patient-reported outcome score, but the muscle and strength signals persisted. And that matters because muscle is what drives stability, function, and the ability to train your way forward. So to summarize the evidence, we now have three randomized placebo-controlled trials in total knee replacement patients, suggesting that a short perioperative essential amino acid strategy can reduce early muscle atrophy and improve muscle recovery metrics, including long-term strength and muscle area measures. That's why my position changed. Not to everyone needs supplements, but to this. For many real-world joint replacement patients, especially older adults, it's extremely difficult to consistently hit a high-quality protein and amino acid target in the early surgical window. And if there's a perioperative strategy supported by randomized trial evidence that can improve muscle preservation, I think patients deserve to know about it. Before we get to the practical application, there's one area of study that I think we're learning a lot about with nutrition. I can't directly apply this to pure essential amino acids yet because this falls into the category of what's called immunonutrition. But clearly malnourished patients have a considerably higher risk of infection. This has been proven predominantly in the general surgery literature. They've even performed studies that show that intervening and improving nutrition lowers the infection rate. Again, the specific product I'm about to mention was not studied in that regard, but the field of nutrition is evolving. We're beginning to understand more. So stay tuned. I think we'll probably hear more of that coming to the orthopedic world pretty soon. Now let's get practical. What does this mean you should actually do? First, food still matters. If you can eat food and hit a solid protein target, that's excellent. Whole foods bring in calories, micronutrients, and overall nutrition. 
But in the first couple weeks after surgery, many people simply can't get enough. That's where a targeted strategy can bridge the gap. The key concept is delivering a high-quality essential amino acid stimulus, a leucine-leaning program in a way that you can tolerate when appetite is low. In our clinic, we use a product called MEN Joint Replacement. Full disclosure, if you use the link in the description, it can be used to support this channel. But I need to be very clear. I'm not telling you a brand name is what matters. I'm telling you that the concept matters. And that concept is that essential amino acids, particularly the ones used in these trials, has been shown proven benefit. Now, the products you're going to see differ, doses differ, formulas differ. If you're choosing a product, compare labels, understand what it contains, and talk to your surgeon or physician about whether it's appropriate for you. And it is not appropriate for everyone. If you have advanced kidney disease or if you have PKU, phenylketonuria, you need medical advice before you start using high-protein or amino acid-heavy products. Do not do this casually. Now, one more thing we need to talk about, taste and reality. People ask, does it taste good? Let me be blunt. These kinds of formulas are not milkshakes. They aren't dessert. My honest advice is this, treat it like a protocol, not a treat. Ice cold water can help, blending it helps, adding a banana or some berries can add some flavor to it. Find something you can tolerate and stick with for the short window where it really matters. And by the way, if you look at this company's website, their reviews for the product are not great because early on the product did not taste too hot. But I'm gonna take a second here and do a little taste test for so you. So we got a white powder. Um, and it says one scoop. Wow. Okay. And I've got a bottle of water here. This is 17 ounces. So I'm going to just put in a little more than half of that bottle. That looks about right. All right. We're going to stir it up. It doesn't solubilize real easily, so I'm wondering if maybe some kind of mixer or even blender would be a good idea. Or I can imagine someone putting this into a milkshake, smoothie, something like that. All right, I think it's mostly in solution now. Put this up, so what? Cheers. That's not bad at all. Basically just tastes like a low sugar lemonade or something. Hmm. Yeah, that is really not bad at all. I can imagine if you mixed up some fruit or blended in some strawberries or something like that, it'd actually be pretty good. So, all right, bottoms up. All right. That would not be uh, a problem for me <laughs> twice a day um, for just a week before surgery and two weeks after. One other thing to keep in mind is generally you have to pay out of pocket for this. And I'm not a big fan of asking people, most of whom that go through the surgery are retired or on fixed income. So I take it very seriously if you're going to spend your own money on something like this. But again, I... I always lean to the evidence and the, the literature and, um, it's pretty convincing and I don't think there's a lot of downside to doing something like this other than the cost, but spread out over three weeks, I think that comes out to maybe $5, $6 a day, something like that. So heck, you can't get a cup of coffee for that much anymore. What about timing? The trials use a perioperative window, a reasonable framework based directly on the RCTs that Framework is start about a week before surgery, continue into the early recovery period, roughly two weeks post-op. This timing makes intuitive sense. That is when catabolic stress is high and appetite is low. I want to end with something personal. I use what I call would I give it to my mother test to evaluate pretty much everything in medicine. If my own mother were having her knee replaced, would I want her going to surgery with a plan to preserve muscle during a high-risk window when appetite is low and catabolic stress is high. Based on these randomized trials, yes, I would want her to have a plan. When I had my own surgery, I didn't do this. I was still in my skeptic phase. I thought I could power through it with just normal food. And looking back on it, I don't think I appreciated how hard it is to hit protein targets when you feel lousy. Your appetite's gone and you're trying to recover from major surgery. I lost muscle, my energy tanked, and it took a lot of time and work to build that back up. If you've seen any of my earlier videos, I talked about how fatigued I was and how long it took me to fully recover. 
I think nutrition probably played a role. I can't change my past recovery, but I can help you think clearly about yours. So here's the takeaway. If you're considering knee replacement or hip replacement, don't ignore nutrition, especially in the early window. Food first when you can, but if you can't, and many people can't, a targeted essential amino acid strategy has randomized trial that's level one evidence showing less early muscle loss and better muscle recovery metrics. I'll put the study references in the description so you can read them yourself. Talk to your surgeon, talk to your physician, make sure it's safe for you. If this helps, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with someone facing surgery. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.